When it comes to global aviation, the Middle East, primarily cities in the United Arab Emirates and Qatar have become some of the most prominent connecting travel hubs for international travel. This has been made possible by what has been described as the big three Middle East carriers, led by Emirates, Qatar Airways, and Abu Dhabi-based Etihad, which on paper would seem to be doing well though the business side hasn't always been as smooth, a trend that has been going on even prior to the aviation demand downturn due to the COVID-19 pandemic of 2020. After its fast-growing start, the airline has been struggling compared to its neighboring counterparts. This video will take a look at the struggles of Etihad in recent years. Since its beginnings in 2003, Etihad has become one of the premier global airlines, and it all started with the aspirations to turn Abu Dhabi into a global connecting hub similar to what you see in Dubai, with Emirates leading a the charge there. This is very much summed up in the airline's slogan, From Abu Dhabi to the World, and the airline had heavy backing specifically from the local government, as of the Emirates states Abu Dhabi is considered the richest. This home field advantage and support has played well into Etihad's plans as since the start, the Abu Dhabi government has provided over $20 billion in financial assistance. Etihad is not alone in this local government support as Emirates and Qatar Airways get such support, which has drawn criticism from the likes of the US-based airlines. And things were great during the first decade of operations as Etihad was rapidly expanding its network along with putting its names in some recognizable places such as sponsoring the Manchester City Football Club in the English Premier League. However, this time of rapid growth would come to a peak in 2014 and following that year things started to decline for the airline. Between 2015 and 2019, the airline reported losses of over 5 billion US dollars and this resulted in the cutting of routes and slashing of plane orders, including a reduction of orders for the Airbus A350s. Also, in-flight services were reduced and traveler reviews took note of this. So you ask what went wrong for Etihad and one would immediately say that the financial situation could be attributed to the overexpansion of the airline in the attempts to copy what Emirates was doing. However, digging deeper, the airline took into investments that didn't really pan out into Etihad's favor. While Emirates in Dubai was launching more routes, Etihad looked to take in stakes of other foreign airlines First in the hopes of turning them around and two to gain a market share for travel to and from Dubai to boost the connecting travel traffic. The airline went on an investment spree on airlines such as Alitalia, Jet Airways in India, Air Berlin and Air Serbia among others. However, Etihad failed at the second objective of gaining passenger traffic to Abu Dhabi as of these airlines there wasn't much travel demand going to Abu Dhabi to begin with. This would then lead to a domino effect of failures of the airlines, starting with the bankruptcies of Alitalia and Air Berlin in 2017 and the high-profile demise of Jet Airways in India in 2019. The other major issue that Etihad has had difficulty overcoming has been the image of Dubai versus Abu Dhabi. When you think of the United Arab Emirates, the first thing you probably will be thinking is Dubai, and the branding of the very city of Dubai has helped Emirates become one of the more premier connecting airlines for travel between Europe and Australia or Asia to Africa, among the many travel options that you can choose to travel with Emirates. This is also not to mention some of the more relaxed laws for foreigners in the city of Dubai compared to the other parts of the Emirates like Abu Dhabi, which helps Dubai in terms of tourism arrivals. Etihad has tried to emulate the formula of Emirates when it comes to connecting in Abu Dhabi which actually includes some perks though this has not translated into the success they were looking for. Prior to the pandemic in 2019, Etihad reported a loss of around 870 million US dollars, slightly lower than the over 1.28 billion loss in 2018. This is in contrast to the overall success of Emirates throughout its history as it has made a profit in most of its years of operation. Prior to the pandemic, Emirates reported a profit of around 456 million US dollars in the financial year of 2019. Unlike Etihad, Emirates has perfected its own business model which has been named the Emirates Business Model, which has goals to reduce its operating costs with a lean workforce and focusing on a few aircraft types such as the Boeing 777s and the Airbus A380s. Even though Emirates operates large aircraft which would normally would be difficult to fill for other airlines, it uses favorable flight times at destination and origin countries in order to make connections possible in Dubai. Along with being a key passenger hub, Dubai also benefits with Emirates being a major cargo carrier with its cargo operations a strong part of its business. 
This is all topped off with the icing of the positive reviews by, by travelers from around the world who get to fly it with the Emirates experience. With good leadership, Emirates has done this without being a part of any major airline alliance and having a limited domestic network. In the last few years, Etihad has been playing catch up to Emirates, but things have been made even more turbulent with the COVID-19 pandemic, which the airline reported a operating loss during the first six months of 2020 to around 758 million US dollars. In an effort to alleviate the costs for the airline, Etihad has removed the 10 Airbus A380 Super Jumbos from operations, as most of the airline's operations remain grounded. Despite its challenges, I believe Etihad still is in a good position to turn around its situation. Like Emirates and Qatar Airways, it also has a favorable location for flight connections being accessible to most of the world's population, reachable by a 5-10 to 10 hour flight. Though it could be said that Etihad should be focusing on itself and not trying to copy what made Emirates successful, though there are some things that they could take from it. Etihad could focus on its regional operations and focus its operations with the smaller aircraft such as the Airbus A320s and A321s, which with the smaller capacity could help the airline compared to the need to fill up the seats on the 777s and the A380s that Emirates has. In terms of its fleet management, Etihad has taken steps to modernize its fleet, relying more on the 787 Dreamliners and the 777s for long-haul operations. And this could continue if Etihad decides to reduce its fleet, as it could focus on its key markets. As mentioned before, Etihad also has a strong financial backing specifically from the Abu Dhabi government. Though the moves that will primarily help turn around the airline will be heavily based on what the upper management of the airline decides on. Etihad's slogan, Abu Dhabi to the world, is painted on their aircraft, a reminder of the origins of the airline. What happens with Etihad going forward has major implications for travel, especially from Asia and the Middle East to other parts of the world. While it does have financial backing in its favor, the decisions set forth by the management of the airline will be the ultimate factor in determining the future of the airline when it comes to its status in global aviation. When it comes to the current state of Etihad, is there anything that I missed and should be mentioned? And what future steps could the management of Etihad take to improve the airline situation? I definitely would love to hear your take though. In the meantime, thank you for watching. This has been Flights in Asia, highlighting the news and updates from the aviation and travel scene in the Asia Pacific. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.